Greetings, ladies and men, gents, and welcome to this latest narration of the web series, The New Threat. If you are new to the series, there is a playlist listed down below in the description. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Chapter 22 Subject, Ambassador Looney, Species Urukari. Description, Reptilian humanoid, no tail, 5 foot 3 inches or 1.6 meters average height. 135 pounds or 61 kilograms average weight. 105 year life expectancy. Ship, N.A. Location, Rigoro. Listen, we all want this to work out. Ambassador Helen Alter Slide. This trade agreement will be an absolutely monumental moment in the history of both of our people. However, I cannot sign off on the agreement as it stands. She gave me a patronizing frown as she slid the tablet containing our offer towards me. My blood boiled, but I managed to keep my cool. She's asking far too much for far too little. At first I thought it was a rather amateurish bargaining tactic, but it's been days and she hasn't budged a bit. Our original offer had been fair, but titled somewhat in our favor, an offer intended to leave room for negotiation, but still had plenty of benefit for the United Systems. The offer from Ambassador Altus had been ridiculous. It left no benefit for the Republic, and we could be foolish to even consider it. Even the damn roots made no sense. For the life of me, I can't figure out what her angle is in all of this. Part of me wished that High Ambassador Shul were here, but that part of me was easily suppressed when I imagined her reaction. It would be absolutely terrible for interstellar relations if Shul ripped the human ambassadors limb from limb. I see, uh, well, uh, we are unlikely to meet your demands, but I'll consult with the appropriate officials once again, I said in my most polite tone as I gathered the tablet from the table. That's so good to hear, she said, smiling once again. I hope that we can come to terms soon. It was a toothy smile, and I'd come to learn that it was intentionally disingenuous. A plausible deniability insult directed towards those who are in a position requiring politeness. Her Alamari assistant wasn't nearly as expressive, but her stillness told me that she was deeply uncomfortable. I nodded goodbye, not trusting myself to speak, and left the office. I walked with a purpose down the hallway towards my own office, wondering what I should do about this. Could I report her? To whom? Not a single one of the U.S. officers I passed along my way could help me. Ambassador Helen Altus is a member of the United Systems Senate Ambassadorial Commission, not the U.S. military. Well, maybe they could get a message to Helen's higher-ups at the USSAC? No. That would be a terrible plan that is sure to backfire. If the USSAC knows what Helen is doing, then approaching them would only serve to demonstrate that whatever they are doing with Helen is working, even if they don't know what Helen is doing. Using back channels to resolve the issue would give both the US and the Republic a diplomatic black eye. At least we'd be even, but I should at least talk to my superiors about it first. Thank the sun that the other negotiations are going well. Before Helen had arrived, the U.S. diplomatic corps had ironed out the details on our joint fleet-building operations, and things were well underway. Plus, representatives from the Unorinka and the Pawanti had arrived and committed to the offensive action. I wasn't in charge of those negotiations, but sitting in on them had proven somewhat amusing. The human USSAC diplomat in charge of those negotiations, Charles Hemwhite, had been brutally honest regarding the United Systems. He had laid out the entire bloody history of the U.S., as well as a good chunk of the even bloodier history of humanity, the Gond and the Alamari, the various and brutal wars that humanity and the Alamari had fought before their space ages, the brutal monarchies and dictatorships of the Gond, and even the various genocides that each race had committed against themselves. It had been a disturbing yet enlightening conversation. It inspired Avmara and Gazo and Oyan diplomatic representatives to do the same. She detailed the various unification wars, the piracy age, and several of the crimes against nature that some of our individual species had taken part in. Once these history lessons had been completed, the independent species had opted to deliberate for some time. Understandably so, they'd been given a lot to think about. Once they returned to the table, the Inorinka seemed more interested in the Republic than the Pawanti seemed more interested in the U.S. Both seemed non-committal, however. It was obvious that they had thought that they only had one of two choices, join the U.S. or join the Republic. Charles had clarified that they could remain independent or even unify with each other without negative ramifications from the United Systems. Avmara was quick to clarify that the Republic agreed with the stance, 
but the fact that Charles had suggested it in the first place raised my respect for him quite a bit. By the warmth of the sun, I wished he'd been assigned to Helen's position. Maybe I should ask him for advice. No, it would probably be inappropriate to ask him how to sidestep his colleague. Hello, Ambassador Ludi, a familiar vague voice said from behind me as I turned the collar. I spun around and saw three marines, an unfamiliar human dignitary, and a figure in a familiar black suit of armor. Warm well, greetings, Director Three, I said with a smile. At least, I hope that's Director Three under there. It is, Director Three nodded. Your inability to tell means the suit's doing its job. It's good that I ran into you. I was about to go to your office. May we speak in private? It is highly irregular for a member of a military to wish to privately speak to a foreign diplomat, but then hardly anything could be considered regular for the group that the United Systems called the Directorate. They're the anonymous overseers of the U.S. military, who are themselves overseen by an exceedingly capable artificial intelligence. All this had been in a briefing packet, and the transparency had made me wonder what they could be hiding. It must be quite important. Yes, we can speak in my office. I gestured down the hall. Director Three nodded to the dignitary, who returned the gesture and began traveling down the hallway that I'd come from with one of the marines. I tried not to wonder who he was or where he was going as I led the director to my office. We entered the somewhat cozy room, and I gestured for the director to take a seat. As he did so, one of the marines stood in front of the outside of my office, and the other stood in the front on the inside of my door. Anyone who would want to interrupt this discussion was going to have a fairly anxious time of it. Thank you for meeting with me, Ambassador, Director Three began. How's your brother been? You would likely know more about that than I would, I chuckled. Last I heard, he was on the USS Thanatos, acting as a military ambassador to the Yonorinka. Personally, I think that he should have joined the Yonorinkan delegation and traveled here, taking over the from Ambassador Evra, but the powers that be disagreed. Indeed, they do. Well, I am happy to inform you that your brother is still alive, well, and doing a good job as far as the U.S. is concerned. Turning to a more serious matter, what is your opinion on Ambassador Helen Altus? It would be inappropriate for me to share my personal opinion of the Ambassador with a representative of her government, I replied. Yes, I, I suppose it would. The reason I wanted to meet with you is because we'll be replacing Ambassador Helen, the director explained. I wanted to explain why, to alleviate any concerns you may have regarding her, uh, treatment of our trade discussions. I'd secretly been hoping that was the case, but the news still shocked me. I managed to catch my jaw before it dropped, but my surprise had to have been obvious. Helen Altus is a covert member of an organization known as the Front of Humanity. It is a xenophobic organization that believes that humanity would be better served by being alone in the universe. Helen's mission from them was to sabotage the trade agreement in such a way that it would harm relations between the U.S. and the Republic. Well, she very nearly did just that. I held up my tablet. If I had to give this to my superiors, there's no doubt that they'd be displeased. Indeed. Her assistants noted her uh, tough negotiation strategy and reported it. Unfortunately, Helen's direct superior is also a member of the TFH and kept the report from the rest of USSAC. The Bureau of United Systems Intelligence caught wind of this report, though, and began covertly observing Helen and her boss, Director Three said. I see. It was fairly easy to confirm that her boss is a member of the TFH, but Helen was stealthier. It took time to catch her in a mistake, which was when she sent a coded message bragging about her success to her superiors in TFH. She was likely unaware that she was under surveillance, and this gave us the actionable intelligence required to remove her from her current position. What's going to happen to her? I cannot divulge that information. However, Helen will be immediately replaced by Ambassador Charles Hemwhite, and we will be accepting your original trade proposal, Director Three explained, assuming it's still on the table. I can make sure it is, I said with a warm smile and a nod. That's good to hear. I'm glad that we... Director froze for a moment, as if listening to something. Apologies. I have to take my leave. What's going on? I cannot divulge that information, but you'll hear about it soon enough, the director said as he stood. Thank you for your time, Ambassador Looney. I hope that you accept our sincerest apologies for any inconvenience that Ambassador Altus may have caused. Goodbye. I was left without the words as Director 3 hurriedly left my office. I was bemused at first. But then I felt the icy stab of fear in my chest as I realized the gravity of a situation that could cause someone as powerful as a director to cut a meeting short. 
I'll hear about it soon enough. What could that mean? End of chapter. I'd quickly like to thank the T5 peeps. Cold War Boomerwaffen, Severin Cerberus, Bushmaster 177, Henry the Red, Caspar Arnholtz, Cold War Boomerwaffen, Elijah Silvercross, Dragzoon WRE, and Severin Cerberus. Thank you very much.